This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. More on that later. This is supposedly a $25 mod that makes an iPhone XR look like an iPhone 15 Pro. We've done mods like this before in the past, but this has to be the craziest one. This apparently has the action button as well, and uh, apparently this also has a flat display too to mimic the iPhone 15 Pro because the XR is a little curvy. This one is obviously broken too, so that's why we're doing this mod in the first place. Let's uh, let's take a look inside. So this is by a company called Fans Create, and if you guys want to do this, I'll drop a link in the description. Check it out. And there it is. I don't know about the color, but the cameras look very, very convincing. Let's get a closer look in here. Damn, so we do have the rounded edges. The sides do look like the original titanium, but the back color is just kind of off. Let's, uh, let's open this up. We'll go ahead and take off this sticker and check that out. Now it does look a lot more convincing. Not bad at all. So if you're wondering how this works, basically you have the two fake cameras over here and the fake LiDAR sensor over here. And this just moves everything around. So on the actual backside, this is an XR as usual with some minor adjustments. You can see that the flash has been rerouted to connect directly to the battery through this tag on flex. Interesting touch, I've never seen that before in one of these. The microphone remains in the same position, but instead of having its own mesh hole, well, it's going to be using the camera gaps, which probably will lead to some muffled audio. So there are obviously real functional drawbacks to doing this mod. However, it will look pretty cool. This mod also has a legit action button. So this presses like, well, the normal action button, except it probably still just does the mute and unmute features. But uh, it's very cool that they added this this time around. There is one more thing in this box and it's the flat screen I was talking about earlier. Let's have a look at that because uh, I'm curious to see if they added a notch or you know the dynamic island. Open this up. That is an iPhone 10R display and it's completely flat. So you're still gonna have the classic notch that's not going away, but the display's flat so it'll sit flush with the actual housing instead of having that little bump there. So this is as convincing as you could possibly get for a fake iPhone with real iOS. I always run into problems though, swapping everything from the XR to the actual housing. It's usually never a perfect fit, so let's see how it goes and let's see if, I mean, maybe you guys can do this at home. So I actually bought this iPhone XR for only 120 Canadian, which is so cheap compared to what they used to go for. But it is broken, so we might as well upgrade it. We'll hit this iPhone XR with an un... That screw's a little bit elevated. I think someone's been in here. Unscrew... Oh, it's stripped. Of course, the screw is stripped. We'll unscrew the other one. And it's also stripped. Well, because we are replacing the screen already, I don't really care if it breaks. I'm not gonna break it though. I have a little trick to get into these. Basically, you need your boy Jimmy. You take Jimmy and you just pull on the screen. You gotta be kind of forceful, but you can push back the clips to a point where you can still open the screen without even removing the screws. Something I just picked up with experience, but very easy to do. And of course, the screen has been replaced, no surprise there, but looks like they replaced the seals and I don't see any missing screws, so they did a decent job. Let's go ahead and unscrew everything we can see. I am very worried about people using this kind of thing to scam other people, so uh, use this video as a guide so that you know the difference between the fake and the real phones and we can disconnect the front earpiece speaker and remove the screen. So now, what we have to do is basically get ready to transfer everything, and I mean everything, onto the new housing. So one by one, we're gonna start removing stuff, and uh, we'll start off with the... We'll start off with the battery, why not? Apply some alcohol. This just softens the adhesive so that the forbidden cheese comes off just a little bit easier. And I can just pull on it. Check that out, it's coming out really nicely. And boom, that's one. We'll get the other. That one did not come out as smoothly. We could just take our boy Jimmy and leverage up the battery. Just being patient. And in terms of the top pull tabs, well, you don't really have to remove them. You can kind of just 
slowly pull up on it and they remain in place but the battery comes up and I'll just pull everything off together take a look at how satisfying that is there we go that's the battery removed my back oh, my back this chair is literally trash. It was squeaking in my videos, making my back hurt and insanely uncomfortable. Most of us don't realize how much a good chair can change your life. That's better. This FlexiSpot C7 chair is the best chair I have ever sat on. It pretty much forces you to keep your back straight and fix your posture by automatically adjusting with you to make sure your back is always supported. It's completely adjustable from the headrest to changing the way the seat tilts. It reclines from 90 degrees to 128. This thing is perfect for work, gaming, or even just relaxing. You can pick this up in mesh and foam versions. Personally, I'm a big foam guy. And using my code, you'll get 30 dollars off. If you don't like it, you have 30 days to return it and a 10 year warranty. Click the link in the description and use my promo code C730 for $30 off. So I want to remove the logic board, but to do that we have to remove the SIM tray because there's a screw holding everything in. And now we can disconnect everything. We also want to remove the actual SIM tray because if you don't, you won't be able to take off the SIM reader. Now we'll remove the actual SIM reader, disconnect pretty much everything else. One of the reasons you want to start off with the board or the front cameras or the battery is because the charging port assembly runs under the motherboard. That's a change they made after the iPhone 6, 6S, and uh, it made swapping the charging port a lot harder. We'll unscrew the motherboard or the logic board whatever you like to call it. And now we can remove the iPhone XR motherboard. This is in really good shape. And honestly, this phone is one of the easiest phones to fix nowadays because it's cheap and everything is fairly easy to replace. We'll go ahead and start off by removing the front cameras. These are kind of just glued down over here. You just pull up on it very gently. Now let's get to the back camera. We'll remove this shield and pop out the back camera. So the new housing, the fake housing, um, doesn't have the wireless charger, which is honestly quite hard to remove without damaging. Before we get to the charging port and the wireless charging, we have to remove these little antenna cables up here. There we go. We have the antenna. We'll transfer that over now to save uh, time and energy later. Let's move on to the charging port. We'll get that all removed. This is probably the hardest part about this whole thing. The charging port just has so many screws and it has multiple layers to it. So keeping track of these screws can be difficult. We'll disconnect the antenna. Put that over there. Now we can disconnect the Taptic engine and remove that. Go ahead and unscrew the loudspeaker. The loudspeaker just connects via these two contact points to the actual charging port flex cable, so uh, it's very easy to remove. All that's left is the two bottom screws over here, and uh, because we didn't take off the actual bottom pentalobe screws down here, we might run into some issues, but we'll have to see. And we have to go around those pentalobe screws that are still there. This should just slide right off if we're lucky. Looks like we're not lucky. We're gonna pull out our grinding pen, turn it on, and grind the shit out of these screws. Now we'll take a flathead bit, this one's tiny, and we're just gonna unscrew these screws. Because we grind it into them, they now identify as flathead screws. Obviously, if the phone was in pristine condition, this could damage the housing, but we don't, we're not gonna use this, so who cares. Unscrew the second pentalope flathead screw, and voila! This is the charging port in its rawest form with the two microphones. And now we're gonna grab this guy, remove that, and we have to remove the wireless charger. This thing's so flexible, it's very easy to damage, so you wanna be incredibly careful. We're gonna take a heat gun, and we're just gonna heat up the back, making sure to move the heat gun around, and check out how easy everything's coming off over here. Very nice. We're gonna go ahead and unscrew its connection to ground. Now we can just pop out the wireless charger. Easy as that. So we're pretty much all ready to build this up, but before we do, we have to transfer over these little clips over here. And what these do is basically they hold the screen in place. It's like an extra layer of support. So you can see on the screen, you have these tabs here and these little screws where the display connects to the back plate. Well, they also hold in the screen when you click it in. That's basically where the crunch sound comes from. We're gonna transfer all these over. 
The reassembly process was pretty standard for an iPhone XR. We took all the parts and placed it in this new housing, but when it came to the battery, things got a little bit strange. It was really awkward trying to connect the battery to the tag on flex and then the tag on flex to the motherboard. It took a lot of disconnecting and reconnecting, but we managed. Now we'll install the screen. No, this looks so convincing. Let's see if this thing boots. We'll remove the screen film. Wow, this is honestly the best one yet. This looks so real. So obviously the biggest difference is the fact that this still takes lightning port. Plug that in. There we go, we have an Apple logo and removing the charger. The Apple logo is still on, meaning the battery is connected properly. That was my biggest concern since it is connected to the flash first. Let's see if this thing fully boots up. Brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? Brother, ew. Take a look at this screen. So these bezels are actually the same size as normal 10R bezels. It just looks so strange because it's flat. But take a look at this $25 mod. This thing is so convincing. We made a fake iPhone 15 Pro with real iOS. Now I do wanna test a few things before we finish up here. We'll go ahead and turn on the flash and you can see that works. And we also wanna test the microphone because if you remember what I said earlier, we basically relocated the microphone so it's behind one of these cameras instead of in the actual microphone slot. So things might sound a little bit off. We'll head to our camera app. And how does the microphone sound, guys? Make sure you let me know in the comments. The camera seems to be working fine. Also, make sure you check out chair from FlexiSpot. This C7 chair is honestly the most comfortable chair I've ever sat in. Uh, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.